Right, hiya folks. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of welding and some powder coating to an old Honda Izzy lawnmower deck. Now, this isn't my lawnmower deck. This comes from um, a subscriber and also a fellow YouTube creator. Try to fix it. Paul, his name is. If you haven't been over to Paul's channel, he's a pretty new channel. Get over there. I'll leave the link in the description below for you to go and check him out. He does like lawnmower repairs and stuff like that. And he tries to fix anything. So give him some support. Get over there. But he lives local to us and... Um, he come over the other day because he bought two lawnmowers off of Gary, Project Man, to try and clear some of the junk from outside our uh, polytunnel. And um, he brought this over as well. Apparently he's uh, got this Honda Izzy deck. He's had it welded up apparently. And uh, he did ask Gary, he asked Gary of all people, to powder coat it. But what I have noticed, we'll have a little look at the deck and where you've had it welded out. There is a couple of spots on it that need to be welded before it gets powder coated because they'll show up. Let's show you them. Right, so this is the deck. He's actually supplied it to me like this and it's had a bit of remedial work done. If I just lift it up there, you can see underneath where I think it's his mate or someone he knows has done some patchwork for him in there. So um, as you can see, it's been marked up there. Let's cut another, another couple of patches up there. Some spots there sort of thing. And it has had some work done up here or quite a bit of work done actually. But um, when we turn it back over, Oh, there's one in there as well. Look at that. Look, he's done some right good patchwork in there, and he look there, and also in there as well. So he's had a lot of work done, but unfortunately, the finish just at the front here, there's a hole or a couple of holes there, two or three holes there. There's a hole there or two holes there, and there's a couple more there basically. So they're going to need um, a little blob of welding there. They probably go bigger and bigger, but I'm going to have to fill them because as I say, if I power the coat straight over that, you'll just see that, and it'll look terrible. And also, one of the welds he did have done on the side here, this one's been welded from the back, which is probably a good way to do it, but it's left a crack on the surface there, so I'll just be going over that one there with a bit of weld as well. So um, that's really all I can see. These have been done, as you can see there, and also up there as well. So he's had plenty of welding work done on it. So all in all, he's, had, he's done a really good job on it, his mate, so um, he should be pleased with that. But as I say, it's just that I can't powder coat over that as that is because that will show up. So let's get the welder out. So this is my little setup I've got here. It's a Clark Weld MIG 135TE Turbo. This is ideal for sort of small bodywork stuff, car bodywork and stuff like that. This is thicker than car bodywork actually. This is probably um, 1.25 mil. Car bodywork's normally one millimeter, which is 20 gauge. So for this setup, I'm just gonna have it on number one. I'm gonna have it on minimum. And I'm going to have the wire speed set between 6 and 7. I find that to be about right for this sort of uh, application. So I'm going to put you on a tripod now. I'm ready to go. Just going to try and dab some weld on there. They will probably blow a bit wider and a bit bigger. But I'll have to ride the back of the weld, so to speak, and just fill them up. And then we'll grind them down afterwards. Then we can powder coat it. Right, folks. I'm going to put my rub me gloves on, my leather gloves. And also, I've got my mask on, as you can see, with the auto dimming screen on it. Never weld without one of them on, folks. So here we go. Looks like it, folks. Oh, one more there. Oh, that burnt through that one. Yeah, the last one, folks, blew through, but uh, I think we got it. All right, let's get that off there. Just lay that over there. And I'll just get the old flappy disc on them, folks, and we'll have a little look and see what they're like when I've uh, just ground them down flat. Right, so just got an old flappy disc on there, folks, 80 grit, and let's see what we can do with this. Right, it's going to be better than what it was anyway, so we'll leave it at that. I'll give it a wipe down with some acetone and a blow off, get it all clean, and then we'll get over there and we'll powder coat it. Right, okay, folks, so first of all, let's just give it a blow down. Get any dust off of it. Right, 
right, that's all we need there. I've just put my homemade oven on, that's heating up now. I'll wait for that to get up to 180 degrees C. And what I've got here is some acetone. So we give that a good wipe down with that. Again, just to get rid of all the uh, contaminants we can. There we go. As I say, this isn't a perfect spotless part, this folks. There's still bits of paint stuck on it in places, but um, if we just make sure it's clean and free from grease, the uh, paint can normally take that. I'm trying to hold it as little as possible, folks. So we'll now hang it up and give it its powder coat. So providing that hangs up like that, we should be okay. Yeah, that should go in all right. So let's take it over here. So those of you who watch my channel would know that I use the Easy Coat powder coating system. And this one doesn't have any mains transformers in it at all. All the magic happens in that little tube there. That positively charges the, the powder, and when it comes out, it's attracted to the negative charge on the, hopefully, the piece. I'm just gonna put my dust mask on. I'm gonna switch my air, con, uh, air fan on so it sucks all the crap out, and uh, we'll start powder coating, folks. There we go. And as you can see folks, that fan keeps all the dust down. So that's ideal. And what you're looking for is that you've got a, a matte finish. If you can see the shiny metal below that, then you know that you haven't got any enough. What you can do, if you don't get enough on, you can actually powder coat it over again. So um, I've done that many times. And also, when you're doing candies as well, for example, you could put a base coat of silver down and then you take it out of the oven, let it cool down, and then you can put a, the candy color on top and that gives you your candy effect sort of thing. So yeah, you can over powder coat powder. So let's go and check the oven. And as I say, this was a powder coating I made myself, powder coating oven, which is virtually up to temperature now. So we'll just open that door up. Like that, that one like that. Bring this over. In she goes, like that, and like that. Hopefully, that'll be it. There we go. So we'll leave that in there until the part reaches 180 degrees C, and then we'll count down 10 minutes. You'll see it flow out anyway. So we'll come back when it's done. So while I'm waiting for that to cook, I'll just get me Henry Hoover out and just clear up the area on the deck there so it's all back to normal. And to clean their gun out, Undo the bottle, connect up our airline, and just do that. Blast it through first of all. Take it out. Connect up your airline. And literally blow through the chamber. All through. Clean through the end. And that's it, gun's ready for the next time. Get that off. Put our bottle 
back in our container. That goes in there for the next time. Get our gun, just unscrew the water trap. You're operating at so low pressure, so there's really no need to have that tightened up with a spanner because it's really low pressure. And you'll never ever get any water in there. I never have because the pressure's so low. So just whack that back in there. Put that back in there. Shut the lid up. A hey, presto, ready for the next time. And no need for any high powered voltage. Uh, plug it into the mains and all that with this system. Uh, it's a very good system. I've used it many times. I've done many, many videos on it. And if you go to my Retro Hacks channel, have a look at that. There is a playlist there for powder coating where I've powder coated some really weird stuff. Things like... Um, Tin foil. I'm even, I even powder coated a pair of leather shoes. How about that? So that's retro hacks. I'll leave a link in the description below there uh, for the playlist, and just have a little fit, have a look at that and see what else I've uh, powder coated in the past. Right. Let's get there and have a look at that oven. Right. Let's have a little check on the pot. There we go. That's up to 164 degrees centigrade at the moment, folks. And I can already see that through the window it has floated out. So I'm probably going to start the counting now. 180. This normally cures at this or floats out at. So. Um, I'm gonna give it 10 minutes from now and then we'll take it out and have a look. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, folks, now time. Let's turn the oven off. Right, okay, oven off. Here we are, we're going in. Right, folks, here we go. I don't know what this looks like. Looks all right to me so far. Here we go. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> well, there we go, that don't look too bad. There's a few little marks there, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm putting a sticker on the front of that, but all in all, I think you'll see that uh, it's not come out too bad. There we go. We'll wait till we get it out fully, but um, it doesn't seem to be too bad, folks. This is titanium silver, this, by the way, so... Um, anyway, let's get let, let it cool down, and we'll get it out, and then we'll have a closer look. It's probably going to take about 20 minutes to cool down, so I'll see you then. Right, folks, OK, we're out of the oven now. I've put a sticker on it, and um, it's OK. It's not the best in the world, but... It's going to look decent once you get all the wheels on and stuff like that. Let's have a little look at it. As you can see, where it's had work before, you can see the little ripples there and welds and stuff. But uh, on the whole, it looks okay. Coming around there, it's uh, it's okay. It's got a little bit of a reaction there. That's where there was um, possibly some paint bubblage, but it's nothing I can really do about that. That's down to the cleaning. So coming around here. Again, it's pretty much okay. The main thing is, is this, this top bit looks all good as well. So that's the main thing there in the front. Looks okay. But as you can see, if you don't prepare it properly, that's where it's been dug in with the uh, grinder there. Look, you can see that. But uh, all in all, the finish is not too bad. Now, as you can see, it's powder coated. It's going to be scratch resistant there. So it's okay now to rebuild this straight away. Uh, there's a little bit there. But again, you're not going to see any of this, to be honest with you. So... Um, yeah, there we go. That's it. Compared to what he had, I think you'll find that's uh, not a bad job and it's going to look okay once it's all back together. I can only do what I can do with the preparation that we had at the end of the day and um, all in all, that's going to sort you out, I think. So, I mean, as I've mentioned in many of my other videos, I don't actually do this for, for making money for, uh, for people because my time's too busy. We've got two YouTube channels to sort of work on and I haven't got time to take in private stuff and uh, do them sort of little jobs. This is only because it's a mate of uh, Gary's and also as a fellow YouTuber who's just starting off as well. So um, we don't actually do these jobs for other people, basically. There you go, folks. Don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button if you are interested in my content and what we do here. And also, I'm no expert at the end of the day. I just have a go at anything, really. Just apply a bit of common sense and we work our way through it. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.